banks be having entries written with quill pens, so the system's been on the go for a lot longer than the computers have. And we're going to look at how a very simple case to see how current account money is created and used. We're going to be ignoring cash and just use, looking at digital, the two forms of digital money, and we're ignoring interest on loans for the sake of simplicity. And we're going to be looking from the customer's point of view and then go through it again looking at it from the bank's point of view. We've got three characters, Alan, Bob and Carol, who each use a different bank, Bank X, Bank Y and Bank Z. And to start with, we're going to say they've each got a thousand pounds in their current account. All the figures on here are in thousands. Bob is going to take out a bank loan, but he hasn't done so yet. And in the extreme right-hand column, we've got the money supply, which is the total of the current accounts. This is the amount of money circulating in the whole economy and in this minute example just comprises those three lots of £1,000. And the first thing that's going to happen is Bob is going to take out a bank loan of £1,000 from his own bank, Bank Y. And he does, and the bank does this very simply by writing an extra £1,000 into his current account and at the same time getting him to sign a piece of paper to agree to repay it at some point in the future with various terms and conditions. I'm using the arrows to show which figures change on the table. And the, um, in, in one sense, they're creating that £1,000 out of nothing, but from their point of view, they're giving him it uh, sort of as an advance, as it were, against this repayment he's going to eventually make. They're balancing the books by increasing the loan in, lo in line with increasing the current account. But nevertheless, the effect on the total money supply is it's increased by £1,000 because uh, we've now got 1 plus 2 plus 1. We've got £4,000 now circulating in the economy. Bob is now buys a, uh, a car from an, a, an old car from Carol and pays her with a check for a thousand pounds. So her account will go up by a thousand pounds, and his current account will go down by a thousand pounds. Nothing else has changed, and the money supply remains the same. Then finally, <laughs> Alan is going to pay Bob a thousand pounds for some work he's done for him. And instead of paying it into his current account, Bob's going to use that £1,000 to repay his bank loan. So Alan's current account goes down by the 1000 Bob, Bob's current account doesn't change, but instead he's paying back the bank loan and his loan account now goes down to zero. And so if we look at what's the money supply um, what's happened to the money supply? That's now naught plus one plus two. It's now gone down to three thousand pounds. So, but through that whole process of the loan being repaid, the money supply has shrunk again back to where it was at the beginning. Nobody's actually cancelled or destroyed anything in any sort of active way. It's just a consequence of the system that a thousand pounds of spending money has disappeared. OK, now we'll build on that. We're going to go to the other side of the counter and look at what's been happening from the bank's point of view. So we're going to be looking at their balance sheets in very simple terms, assets and liabilities. And we've got three columns for each bank at the moment, and I'll fill in the others later. And starting from the right, each bank's got their purple money, their reserve account at the Bank of England, and we're going to start them off with £10,000 each for the sake of the illustration. The, then one to the left of that in the black, each bank may have loans that this lent out. Bank Y is going to lend uh, to Bob in a minute. And that actually counts as an asset. And the reason is, it's, if 
a bank has made a loan, it's done so in the expectation that that loan will be repaid at some point in the future. When it's repaid, that might be new purple, more purple money coming in for them from another bank. So it's an expectation of future purple money. So that counts alongside the existing present purple money as an asset. Conversely, current accounts count as liabilities because they are money which the bank at any point may have to pay out in terms of purple money if, somebody sp if the current account holder spends that money or withdraws it. So, the, uh, or particularly in the case of this example, spends it. Now, this took me a long time to get the hang of. At first, I assumed that money in a current account would be a an asset of the bank, because I had this picture at the back of my mind of the little bag of money in a, in a box somewhere that they were looking after for me. So I thought, well, they've got more money there, surely it's an asset. But as I've tried to indicate, that's not the case at all. It's a liability. It's money that they are owing the customer. So that's our starting point now with the purple as well as the blue money shown. Um, the bank loans made, sorry, um, the bank loans made and the current account of Bob increases and his loan account increases and that's all that happened. No purple money changes. The bank doesn't need to get anybody's permission to do it or tell the Bank of England what's happening. It's just a private arrangement between the bank and Bob is just done by changing those two figures. Bob now pays Carol a thousand pound cheque for the car and Carol pays it into her bank, Bank Z, which sends it through the clearing system to Bank Y to check it's all okay. So as a result, Bob's, um, as a result, Bob's bank account, go check, uh, current account goes down, Carol's goes up and the money's trans purple money is transferred from um, Bank Y to Bank Z in their accounts at the Bank of England in order to compensate Bank Z for having a greater liability to Carol now. <coughs> and lastly, another cheque, Alan paying Bob. Again, his current account goes down. Bob doesn't use it to pay into his current account, he uses it to cancel the loan and at the same time Bank X pays Bank Y a thousand pounds of purple money to again to balance that out. So that's the story from the bank's point of view but I'm now going to fill in those extra columns to finish the story. Has now got a final column called capital and you can define it slightly, I'm going to define it slightly differently from Bob. Capital is assets minus liabilities. So in each case, the bank's capital is £9,000, 10 in the reserve account minus 1 in, in current accounts. And in the extreme right-hand column, we've got the total of base money in the system, which is the total of all reserve accounts at the Bank of England, now £30,000. Right. As we go on through the system, the capital of each bank is un remains unchanged. In each case, each transfer that occurs, an asset, where an asset increases, the, li uh, the bank's liability also increases. If it decreases, the bank's liability also decreases. So um, when the bank loan's made, you've got 10 plus 1 is 11, take away 2 still gives you 9. Um, and when Carol gets a cheque, um, her assets have been increased to compensate for the liabilities being increased. So you've still got £9,000. This capital is the assets minus liabilities is a way of looking at the value of the bank. If the bank was wound up at that point and all the assets and liabilities cleared, how much money would be, there be left over for the sh to be shared out among the shareholders? 
the sort of things that, in, in this example, um, there's no um, changes to the capital. The sort of things that could affect the capital are if a bank gets paid loan interest or bank charges, its capital will go up. When it pays bills and wages, pays out interest on savings, pays dividends to shareholders, writes off loans, things like that are all things that reduce the bank's capital. It's, a, it's sort of like the um, things that affect the profit and loss of the bank. Now let's have a look at the total base money in the right-hand column, which is the total amount in the reserve accounts. That also remains unchanged because all that's ever happened is purple money's been transferred from one bank to another bank. It's never been created or destroyed, and it would be quite difficult for uh, the banks to... I don't know whether anybody other than the Bank of England could ever create or destroy the purple money. So that just goes round in a loop and doesn't change enough. If we come back to the question we started with, when a bank loan is repaid, is the money cancelled out of existence or kept by the bank? I hope I've given a bit of a clue by the colours I've used there. The answer is it depends what you mean by the money. You can't, to be honest, say the money. It's an ambiguous expression. If you're looking at the blue money, the current account money, money supply, the M4 money, the IOUs from high street banks, that has been cancelled, as we saw, um, just going back to... Th that was cancelled, as we saw, when the loan was repaid. Mysteriously, a thousand pounds disappeared from the system, even though nobody went and tore anything up or cancelled it or put it through the shredder. It just disappeared out of the system. But the other type of money, the purple money, the reserve account money, is kept by the bank. There's no way that a high street bank could ever have destroyed it. And that's why perhaps when money reformers talk about money being cancelled, bankers could, can, could be quite offended by that because they say, we never cancel anything. Every operation we perform is proper double entry bookkeeping. When we increase one thing, we decrease something else to balance it, which is perfectly true. From their perspective, in looking at the purple money, which is what they really deal in, they've never created or destroyed anything. And so the answer to the question is basically both things are true. Both sides of the argument have a point. They're talking about different types of money. And I think that more or less finishes my story.